Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry. I'm at Plaid Enterprises, and the best thing that you're going to see today is how to take our folk art home decor chalk and turn it into a wonderful project with a new tool. I love tools. I know you guys do too. This is going to make a rough chippy effect, and that's the technique we're going to teach you. And we have great brushes, multiple colors that will fit perfect into your home and many layering colors to choose from which is wonderful. We have three wax colors that I love and I think by the time you get through with this you're going to look around your house and go I can do this and I have lots of projects to work on. Okay, we're gonna get started painting a great project, but I wanna tell you a little bit about the paint. This Folk Art Home Decor Chalk is wonderful. I have fallen in love with it. I love that I don't have to prep by sanding and doing different things to my surface. I can just take a clean surface like this raw, unfinished a serving tray, which is gonna be really fun to work with. And it covers, and sometimes just one coat, so it's wonderful. It washes up with soap and water. It's just really, really nice. I take um, a stirring stick and I make sure I stir my paint before I get started. We don't want y'all shaking it. And then we're gonna start base coating. Now, isn't that great? You don't have to do um, a primer or something on it. And you don't have to put something on it before you start painting, right, with the chalk paint. All right, so I've got great tools here. I love this brush because it picks up so much paint. You can cover a lot with this brush before you have to go get more paint. Now I'm gonna take and put a nice coat on the inside of this tray. I kind of went against the green here, and then at the end I can go back and go back and forth across, all right? Now we have beautiful different colors to choose from. I picked three colors for this technique that I wanted you to see. And the first one we brush on, and then we're gonna come in and show you this other technique with our block that you're just gonna love. Okay, so see how nice it covers? And this brush holds a lot, just like I told you a minute ago. And the thing is, is that when I get finished with this, it dries and you wanna let it dry for two hours and before we start our next step, okay? So, all right, I have just finished and let this um, tray dry. What we used was the cathedral door for the center. And then I picked up my smaller brush and used the um, vintage mustard. I put an accent of that on the sides. And actually this vintage mustard is what I'm gonna use with my wood um, block, layering block, all right? And so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take and pour my paint in, uh, and I'm gonna have to have enough paint for the block to fit in the loading area, okay? Which is not enough. <laughs> there we go. All right. I love new techniques, isn't that fun? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our block, and we're gonna tap in here and cover all the base. You can see I really didn't get that edge right there. All right, so let's come to our second plate. And I'm just gonna tap it down a little bit because we don't want too much when we go. We can actually still use this paint, all right? So now what we're gonna do on top of the tray, we're gonna start and layer this across. Now it's gonna kind of float across here. And that's what's gonna give us this nice, um, the rough chippy effect. Look how fun. And it's just a really light layer. I'm gonna come a little bit this way, but you can see I'm gonna need more. And make sure you've gone all around the edge. Okay, now we're gonna keep going. If I started this way, I started here so it's heavier. Now I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna float this across here. And see, what I love is that you don't see like where we started and began, which I think really makes a really nice look. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna let this totally dry before we start putting our next layer of color. All right, so just tap some of it off. You're gonna have a nice consistency of color. See how nice that is? You don't see like lines where we stop. Oops, there we go. 
All right, so now we're gonna let this dry totally. I'm gonna put it around on my edges and then we're gonna come back and start with our next color. Okay, now I wanted you to see that I've covered my whole tray, bottoms and side, and inside the center with our, the block of using our vintage mustard. Okay, so now I let it totally dry. So, and some of the layers are thick, so you gotta make sure it's dry. And then I'm gonna bring in my Spanish moss, great olive color, I like that. And I'm gonna do the same technique that I did before. And what I love about that, when you're looking at this, to me, I think what's really awesome about it is it looks like layers of paint that have chipped off over the years and we get the benefit of getting it, doing it so easy. And I just love how simple this little technique is and how easy it was to make it happen for, for me and you. All right, so sometimes it got a little thick, so when you come over here and you're thicker in this area, all right, I can still go over here and touch a few places where I skip right past it, but it's a light feathery move as you come around, okay? So you're just touching and sliding very gently. And that's the thing, you don't wanna push, if you push it, you're gonna scrape, so just let it kind of float across here, and before you know it, you have finished a great tray that is an accent for your home, but it was very simple and fun to do. Wasn't that great? I'm excited to share with you how to use these tools. Tools are my favorite thing, I told you. But this wood layering block, do you believe that? What well, I've shown you many times is how to distress and take away. What's great about this tray is that we're taking paint and we're adding it, but it's given us this chippy effect. And now to protect and preserve this tray, we want to put our wax sealer on it or finish on it. So, and I, I picked a clear wax for this one. This one would be also nice with the dark wax. So let me show, uh, share with you that we're using our wax brushes to put that on, and we're making a circular motion to do that. And for the small little crevices and small areas, we use the small waxing brush that's available also. If you wanna learn more about the waxing techniques, please view the Folk Art Home Decor Wax how-to videos, which show you all the technique on how to wax. And if you want more creative ideas, which I love to go find out about the product line and creative ideas to do on my furniture, go to platonline.com and learn a wealth of information.